Troubling indeed, Keith and Stacy. When this mom dropped off her son at daycare, she expected him to be safe. In just one day of researching this daycare, I found neglect is nothing new. The state was aware, but even after a toddler made it into traffic, the state did not take forceful action. Okay, Marissa Addison knows her two-year-old Mason loves to explore. That's why Marissa says she didn't overreact when staff from the Here We Grow Learning Center in Clearwater told her Mason briefly made it outside the daycare. Two weeks later, Marissa claims a former employee called her with a different story. So I'm like, wait a minute. He got into the role. I was on fire. The tipster's account was backed up by video. Mason is in the hallway alone. He slips out the door, down the ramp, and straight into traffic. Soon, Clearwater PD is on scene. The, two years old just out the, street. the officer interviewed witnesses who spotted Mason and saved him. School officials say Mason likely escaped by turning a lock within his reach. He's easily tall enough to reach that lock. Yeah, though. yeah. Where am I? Come back, Mason. Come back, Mason. I kept saying, come back, Mason. Here's the kicker. Mason's teacher watched him walk out of class. It happened during nap time. The teacher told police she didn't want to leave the other kids, so she radioed her co-worker for help. But Mason made it out onto this road before help arrived. You didn't see him go outside? No. My child, poor baby, two years old, is by himself. Like, where is the supervision? Where was the supervision? In Pinellas County, the Florida Department of Health is ultimately in charge of licensing daycares. I pulled state inspection records and found, in addition to Mason's incident, in 2021, there were 14 other violations, which resulted in a total fine of $160. In one incident, staff failed to provide direct supervision of children, so one kid continuously bit another. Another incident, an infant crawled out of the classroom without staff members' knowledge. Records also show in these two cases, the daycare failed to report the incidents to parents as required. DOH tells me they consider these violations to be a one-time issue or minor. Are you happy with the state's response to this incident? No, no, I'm not. So what was the state's response in this case? Well, for a week, they didn't even know it had happened. The state says once a former employee tipped them off sharing this video, they immediately inspected the facility. The daycare's fine for lack of supervision and failure to report a toddler's escape, $600. The facility given a full month to submit a plan ensuring staff understand the responsibilities regarding supervision. Marissa says that's not good enough for her kid or yours. No, they didn't deal with the issue right away. This school was still open. Parents were still dropping their kids off, you know, still trusting them. So two months after Mason was in traffic, the daycare shut down. The state tells me they didn't close this facility. Instead, it was the daycare's decision. When I called the daycare, a woman who would not identify herself told me the facility is going to open up again under new ownership. And Keith, of course, we're going to be closely watching what happens next. Clearly understand the way the mother feels. I mean, I would be like, are you kidding me? She didn't know about it until someone actually came forward to tell her about it. Nor did she know about the history of this daycare. What's a parent's right? I mean, someone watching from another daycare, what are the rights in a situation like this for parents? So the state tells me if a daycare is fine, they are required to post a notice on the door for one year so that's one way that parents can stay informed in our next report I'm going to explain how you can look into the history of your child's daycare but okay. scary stuff <laughs>